episode three, we're gonna go ahead and make a bouncing ball in this exercise. And uh, I just wanna review some stuff that we talked about a little bit in episode two, but didn't focus on specifically. Um, and that's declaring and assigning variables. So when I say declaring, that means we're calling them into existence. We're, we're naming them for processing to give to us. So if we say float x, we're saying I want a floating point variable called x, or int y, I want an integer named y. Um, and these are gonna default to be zero because they're, they're numbers and that's sort of the sensible value something could start at. But you don't have to uh, rely on that. You can set it at the time that you declare it. So in this case, we're both declaring the variable and assigning it immediately in the same line. Now we could write it like this. That's the same effect later on, but sometimes it's nicer just to set a default at the top of the program where you can see what the value is, especially if this value isn't gonna change and you're just sort of using it to store something like a speed. Um, and that's what we're gonna be doing today is something involving speed, so let's get started with the bouncing ball script. Um, so like always, I'm gonna make my two functions, my draw and my setup here. And I'm gonna do a size 800 by 600, so we get this 800 by 600 window, that's perfect. Um, and then for now, let's just draw an ellipse, just get started. So again, for an ellipse, we need two numbers, which are the X and Y coordinates, and then two more numbers, which are the width and the height of the ellipse. So I'm gonna say, 400 and 300, so that's 400 X, 300 Y down, and then make the ellipse, ah, let's do 50 by 50, so it'll be pretty small. There we go. So we want this to bounce around the screen, and that means we're gonna have to track at least two things. We're gonna have to track the position on screen that it's currently at, and we're gonna have to track the speed at which it's moving, or rather the direction. Um, Sometimes when we say speed, we think about that always being forward. You know, you never drive negative amounts of miles an hour. You're always driving positive, even if you're going back to your house where you came from. But in processing, it's relative to the canvas. So if we want to move the ellipse to the left, we have to subtract from our x value. And if we want to move the ellipse to the right, we have to add to our x value. So keep that in mind as we're doing this exercise here. So I'm going to go ahead and declare some variables right off the bat. Float x. Um, 400, float, y, 300. So these are gonna replace our positioning that we had um, explicitly typed in, and now I'm just gonna say those two. So we're substituting them in. And since it has the same value that we started with, it's in the same spot on the screen. But we can just come up here and change that, and now you can see it's more over to the right, so. Maybe the first thing we should do is get the, get the ellipse moving. Um, so every frame before we draw it, we could say x is now equal to x plus 10. This is like we were doing last time. And when I run this, every frame, the x value is gonna increase, it's gonna go right off the screen. So that's okay, but we want it to bounce back, and to bounce back, we need to start subtracting instead of adding. So what we could do is store that speed in another variable that we can change on the fly and use that variable to change our x variable. So what I mean is, you can say float x speed, let's call it, x speed equals five. We'll slow it down a little bit. And then down here, x is equal to x plus x speed. So this is doing the same thing. Again, we're just substituting a variable for something that was hard-coded before. But now we can think about what is the condition where we want to change our x speed when we want to reverse? Well, when our ellipse goes off the edge of the screen, the x position of it will be wider than the whole width of the screen, right? So we could say something like this. If x is ever greater than the width of the screen, now we don't wanna just reset the position of the x, but we want speed to reverse it, right? We wanna go backwards. So we could say x speed is now equal to what x speed was before, times negative one. And uh, if you don't remember your algebra type stuff, uh, multiplying something by negative one will flip the sign. So if it was a positive number, it's now negative. And if it was a negative, it's now positive. And that's gonna come in handy in a sec. So let's just review. If our x position of the ellipse is off the screen, if it's more than the width of the whole screen, 
make our speed negative, start subtracting from it. So when we run this, it's gonna hit it and bounce back. And there it goes, and there it goes off the edge of the screen because we didn't cover that bound. So this is something you'll get into a lot when you're working uh, with graphics is you'll, you'll catch maybe one component, but you'll forget about the others. And this is why I love processing so much because it's really easy to see what happened. The program didn't just crash, or we didn't get some weird text readout that's incomprehensible. We saw almost a physical process and we can try to debug it. So we kind of have two boundary conditions. We have one on the right-hand side of the screen, but now we also have one on the left-hand side of the screen. I mean, we want the ball to bounce back when it hits the left side as well. So what we can do is make this if statement multiple terms. We can say, if x is greater than width, or, and that's those two bars, it's uh, usually the key right above your enter key there if you hold shift and press that backslash. Um, if x is greater than width, or x is less than, it's on the other side of, zero, right? Because the far left-hand side of the screen is zero, and the far right-hand side of the screen is whatever the width is. And because this statement reverses the speed, whether it's negative or positive, it flips the other way, it doesn't care about which side it's on. This will work for both out of bounds conditions. So if we run this, we've got a bouncing ball now. And I should probably turn off, uh, should probably start erasing the background here because otherwise it's gonna be a little unclear. So I'm gonna, at the beginning of our draw, just like before, call our background method. And there's our bouncing ball. So now if we really wanna get this going, we should probably add the Y component in. Remember how we gave it a variable for Y, but we didn't make it move on there yet. So the good news is we can just duplicate what we already have. Um, before we do that, I wanna cover uh, some other kind of um, operators real quick. So right here we're saying X is equal to X plus X speed. So this is called assignment. And this equal sign is an assignment operator. Um, usually when we talk about something being equal in the regular world, we're talking about them being the same. We're talking about something that already existed being true. But in this case, we're doing something. The equal sign here is assigning this value on the right-hand side of it into whatever's on the left-hand side. Um, and it's called an operator because it operates on inputs. Um, another example of an operator is this plus sign. Plus sign takes two operands, the left hand and the right hand, and returns them to whatever else is waiting. But it doesn't do assignment on its own, which is why we need the equal sign. There's another way to write this here, just increasing x by some amount. We could say x is equal to itself plus something. Or the easier way to write this is x plus equals x speed. This is gonna have the exact same effect as before. We're saying add to whatever x currently is the value that x speed is. And likewise, we can do the same down here. We're saying x speed is equal to itself times negative one. Well, we could just say x speed times equals negative one. We wanna make it equal to itself times whatever's on the right-hand side. So these are shorthand uh, assignment operators to writing them the other way. So let's go ahead and duplicate this out for the Y and all we have to do is copy paste. And we're gonna hit an interesting bug though if we're not careful. So I'm gonna change all the X's here to be Y's. And we have to make sure we've declared our Y speed variable, I'm gonna make it five as well. So now if we run this, it's gonna look pretty close, but you notice it goes off the bottom of the screen there. And that was because I wasn't super careful about copy pasting and changing all the things I need to change. So let's go back and look at our code here. So this block and this block are pretty much equivalent. They just operate on a different set of variables. But can you see what I've forgotten to change? If you notice, we're testing if X is greater than the width of the screen, but I didn't change it down here. We're still testing if Y is greater than the width of the screen, but our width and height of the screen are not the same number, right? It's, it's kind of a three by four ratio. So we need to use the variable height because we want to check if Y is bigger than the height of the screen if it's gone off the bottom. And now we should have a pretty good looking ball. Something I always like doing is taking the previous project we worked on and rolling it into the new one. So let's put some random colors in here. If we just call fill 
random 255 for the red, random 255 for the green, random 255 for the blue, and turn off the background refreshing. I've commented this out, or deleted it. Get a rainbow ball bouncing, and it leaves trails. And that's cool, but we could make it go a lot faster than that if we just change our speed numbers up here, if we make them 30 or 40 or something. And there you go, wonderful rainbow clown barf effect. If you're interested in other permutations, try changing the X speed and the Y speed to be different numbers. You'll notice that the ratio of them affects the angle at which the ball bounces. This one is a more X than Y, so it tends to travel more laterally than vertically. Mm -hmm.